Good afternoon and welcome back to Girded with Truth. Today we're talking about guarding against stagnation. Now there's a difference between being stagnant and waiting on God. Psalm chapter 27 verse 14 says, Wait on the Lord, be of good courage, and he shall strengthen thine heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. So this is talking about waiting in the presence of God, waiting on the instruction of God, waiting for God to speak to you because in the process of waiting, that communication with God, that going through the scriptures, that listening to the word of God, it will strengthen your heart. So here David is saying, wait on the Lord, wait on the instruction of God, wait on the word of God. In 1 Kings chapter 17 verse 9, we see Elijah who waited on the instruction of God and the Lord told him, Arise, get thee to Zarephath, which belongeth to Zidon, and dwell there. Behold, I have commanded a widow woman there to sustain thee. So Elijah have waited on the Lord and the instruction of the Lord was to arise. It was to get up. It was to guard against stagnation and go to the place where I have told thee. Because guess what? Your sustenance is no longer in the place where it used to be. It has moved into the place that you are destined to be. And unless you align yourself with the place that you are supposed to be, you will not be sustained. You could possibly die. You could possibly enter into drought. There could be a numerous amount of things that can happen to you. God places our sustenance, our provision, our commission and our purpose at certain points in time in certain places. And here, God is telling Elijah, your sustenance has moved, so get into the place where it is and remove yourself from where you used to be. He said, you have waited long enough come into the place where i have called you into deuteronomy chapter 1 verses 6 to 8 says the lord our god spake unto us in horeb saying ye have dwelt long enough in this mount turn you and take your journey and go to the mount of the amorites and unto all the places nigh thereunto in the plain in the hills and in the vale and in the south and by the seaside to the land of the Canaanites and unto Lebanon unto the great river the river Euphrates behold I have set the land before you go in and possess the land which the Lord swear unto your fathers Abraham Isaac and Jacob to give unto them and to their seed after them so God is saying here it is time to move it is time to go the time of waiting is over it is time to rise up take your journey and begin to go into the direction of your purpose some of us may have turned aside some of us may have gone in a completely different direction than the direction God has for us but God is saying, now is the time to get back on course. Now is the time to focus. Now is the time to move into the direction that I have called you to, to accomplish my purpose. God is saying it is time to arise. So today he's telling us, guard against stagnation and head into the direction of purpose. We have waited long enough. The instruction of God is about to come to us and we have to listen. Isaiah chapter 30 verse 18 says, And therefore will the Lord wait, that he may be gracious unto you, and therefore will he be exalted, that he may have mercy upon you. For the Lord is a God of judgment, blessed are all they that wait for him. So here it is saying, wait on the Lord. But it is saying, don't get stagnant. Wait. Tarry for his instruction. Tarry for his word. Tarry until he comes. But when he comes, it is time to move. There's a difference between your position 
and your posture. Now, you have to have the waiting position, but your posture must always be a ready posture. You must always be waiting with a posture of readiness to go into the direction God has for you to go into. So as we tarry before the Lord, he will bless us. Ruth chapter 2 verses 3 to 7 says, And she went and came and gleaned in the field after the reapers. And her hap was to light on a part of the field belonging unto Boaz, who was of the kindred of Elimelech. And behold, Boaz came from Bethlehem and said unto the reapers, The Lord be with you. And they answered him, The Lord bless thee. Then said Boaz unto his servant that was set over the reapers, Whose damsel is this? And the servant that was set over the reapers answered and said, It is the Moabitish damsel that came back with Naomi out of the country of Moab. And she said, I pray you, let me glean and gather after the reapers among the sheaves. So she came and hath continued even from the morning until now, that she tarried a little in the house. So here, this is Ruth. Ruth has come with Naomi from Moab and they have come into Bethlehem. And this is Ruth tarrying. She's tarrying in the field. She's waiting for further instruction. But she's not sitting aimlessly doing nothing. She is working. We have to have the position of waiting, but the posture of working. We have to be ready for when God calls. We have to always be ready and able to go into the direction where he has called us to. So now he's saying, you have waited, you have tarried just like Ruth. She tarried and she got more than a field to glean in. She gained a husband. So today I'm encouraging you, don't just tarry doing nothing. Don't become stagnant. Guard against stagnation because God wants us to wait, not be stagnant. So today, as you evaluate yourself, as you evaluate your life, as you evaluate your position and your posture, I encourage you to guard against stagnation. There's a clear difference between waiting on God and being stagnant. Do not be caught being stagnant, but instead wait on him. Wait in his presence and when he says arise, when he says get up, when he says leave and go into the place, now is the time for you to proceed. So don't be caught being stagnant. Instead arise and go forth into your destiny. This is a purpose-driven life and this is what you are required to do as you walk into purpose. Thank you so much for listening. Have a wonderful weekend. Bye.